Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, please make sure to like this video and subscribe. Today what we're going to be looking at is a past exam question, an essay question from a um, supplementary exam from February, March 2018. And essentially we're going to look at an essay question. This particular essay question um, is based around gene mutations and protein synthesis. And if you would like to give a little go at this essay writing, please pause the video now. And at the very end of the video, I will share with you the memo. Okay, let's unpack this essay. So um, it's really important when you're preparing to write for an essay that you don't write your essay in bullet points. Um, what you can do is you can do a quick planning session of bullet points, of key terms and, and, and concepts you want to include in your essays. But you should never write an essay in bullet points. And so if we were to unpack some of this essay, let's have a look at the question. So it says, describe how a gene mutation may influence the structure of a protein and also use one example to describe the role of mutations in evolution in present times. Now, at first glance, this seems like perhaps a challenging essay because you're not really sure what you're going to write. It's not actually asking about protein synthesis. It's not really asking you about evolution and how perhaps genetics um, is affected by evolution. And so I chose this essay for that specific reason because it's quite unusual compared to some of the others that we've had before. And so the first thing I want to point out to you when you're going to write your essay is the word describe. Let's not forget what describe actually means as a um, question word. Describe is the how, the why, the when, and not to forget the where. Now, that means that when you are writing your first paragraph, you need to be describing how a gene mutation, where a gene mutation occurs, when does it occur, why does it occur, and Essentially, you end your paragraph off by saying how that influences the structure of a protein. Now, in order to answer this question, you are going to have to use the idea of protein synthesis to answer this question. However, and this is a big however, you must not talk about translation and transcription in great detail because that's not what the question is asking. The question is asking how a gene mutation affects or influences the structure of a protein. Nowhere does it say that you need to describe protein synthesis. What you need to do is you need to take the overall idea of what protein synthesis is and then describe how mutations in that process would result in a different protein being created. So first things first, your first paragraph is going to be actually describing what a gene mutation actually is. And so what you need to do is perhaps spend two or three sentences describing that a gene mutation is a change in the order of nucleotides that may result in a different protein or a different amino acid being formed, and that could then result in a different structural protein. You also, of course, need to mention um, where and when this is happening. And so you do need to mention that generally gene mutations occur during DNA replication or in protein synthesis transcription itself. At no point have I mentioned any translation or transcription processes at all. So now how do we take parts of the protein synthesis and use it to answer this essay question. So essentially, you have to get to the key point of protein synthesis, which is altering the structure of the protein. Now, what actually forms the protein itself? Well, we know that we need to create mRNA during transcription, and that is going to bring the message. Now, if this message is altered in any way, it's ultimately going to change which tRNA appears. And if you change the tRNA, you are also going to change which amino acid arrives. 
And as you can see, it's a bit of a knock-on effect. And so that's how we're going to describe gene mutations affecting the structure of proteins. But at no point am I going to go into any detail about free RNA nucleotides in the nucleus join their complementary base pairs, they form a, a, a ribose um, sugar backbone, they, ed, they exit through the nuclear pore. We don't want that. That's not what they want. They want to know if I change an aspect of protein synthesis, how is that going to change the protein? And that's where these points that I just wrote in now about a different mRNA, a different tRNA, and a different amino acid could ultimately lead to a different protein. Now, when you round out your answer, so now you've gotten to the end of um, almost the end of your paragraph and you're saying that this could result in a different amino acid and therefore this could result in a different protein. It's important to point out that this is always a could result and I will tell you why. It's because not all codons are code for different amino acids. If you've ever seen a codon table before in your textbooks and in your lessons, you would have seen that a lot of codons actually code for the same amino acids. And so you need to acknowledge that in your essay as well. You must also acknowledge that somewhere along the line, even if the amino acid, uh, excuse me, the gene uh, nucleotides are different, it doesn't always mean that you will have a different outcome. So at the very end of your paragraph, you can also mention, um, and this will get you extra marks that perhaps you weren't aware of, that there's a possibility that the same protein will be made even though it's a different set of nucleotides. And that's because, like I mentioned to you now, that the codons may be different, but they all perhaps code for the same amino acids, like alanine, um, sat, uh, uh, um, phenylalanine. They all have lots of the same uh, or similar codons, um, and they all code for the same um, amino acid. So now that's the first part of your essay. That's going to be roughly um, a paragraph or so. It's quite a dense paragraph you are going to write. And you'll see now when we show you the memo at the end how much information you're going to have to actually give. Now remember, the content is out of 17 marks, which means that... Um, out of that 17, I would say the first paragraph is roughly around 8 to 9 marks worth of writing. And it's not just 8 to 9 sentences, because sometimes you can get multiple marks in one sentence. Now, the second part of this question revolves around use one example to describe the role of mutations in evolution in present times. Now, in your exam guideline, you are asked to learn at least one example of a um, evolution in present times example. And some of those are things like um, insects becoming resistant to pesticides, um, bacteria becoming resistant to antibiotics, um, antiretrovirals becoming, um, or should I say, the uh, HIV becoming um, resistant against its antiretrovirals. So you only need to know one. And it doesn't matter which one you use because they don't mind. But now you need to use that example to describe the role of mutations in evolution in present times. And so you've got some options like I mentioned to you now. So these are just two of the examples that I just mentioned now, bacteria and antibiotics or insects and pesticides. And what you need to do now is you need to describe how one of those examples has evolved through a mutation. And I'm going to use the bacteria and antibiotic one because it's one of the more easier ones. It's perhaps the ones we're most familiar with. And what you basically need to do is you need to say that there's variation in bacteria. And when people take antibiotics and they don't complete their antibiotic course, certain um, individuals are left behind and they may have a mutation which makes them not susceptible to antibiotics. Therefore, they survive, they reproduce, and they pass on this favorable mutation to the next generation, making the next generation of bacteria more not susceptible um, to the use of antibiotics, therefore making a antibiotic-resistant strain of bacteria. 
Now that means essentially what you're doing is you're taking the idea of natural selection from Darwinism and you're applying it to this specific example you are using. Please don't speak about your example in the general. In other words, we don't want to hear a paragraph about there are favorable and unfavorable characteristics and some get chosen to survive and others don't and this increases the frequency. You've actually got to build your example into your answer. That's a template answer, the whole um, favorable, unfavorable, etc. You've now got to apply it with the example that you've used. Last but not least, don't forget that you get a synthesis mark for um, this essay as well, which is out of three, and that's going to be, is this essay logical? In other words, does it follow the uh, order in which the question was asked? Is it relevant? Did you mention anything in your essay that shouldn't be there? And is it comprehensive? Did you, did you give enough information on these topics to get the full marks? So here's the memo, and you can have a look over it. And I just want to bring your attention to the mark allocation. You essentially were going to get nine marks for the first paragraph about mutations and protein synthesis, and eight marks for mutations and evolution in present time. And then those final three always come from your synthesis and how well you wrote it. Just to keep in mind, you don't need to have an introductory paragraph or a conclusion in biological essays. You can save that for your other language essays. Now, if you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I will see you next time. Bye.